let's spend a little bit more time with Archimedes. Here is my directrix, and I just and I'm just going to find a few points on the parabola. So one of them is exactly halfway between the focus and the directrix, so right around here. And just remember how we find points on the parabola. We choose any point on the directrix, connect it with the focus. Draw the orthogonal bisector to the segment so that this side equals this side. There will be so many equal segments uh, that will just run out of dashes to, to denote it. This will be uh, the midpoint theorem over and over again. Kind of, kind of wonderful. Okay? And then for any point along this curve, any point along this curve is equidistant between these two points. So to find a point that's equidistant from the focus and the directrix, we just have to draw a line orthogonal to the directrix and see where it intersects this orthogonal bisector. And so that's one point. And so the result is that this side equals this side, which is what we want, which is by definition uh, what it takes to be on the parabola. And then to find another point, I just chose another point on the directrix. I made sure that it's not the same distance from the focus horizontally along the directrix, just so that it's different. And uh, did the same thing, connected the two, drew an orthogonal bisector. I will no longer waste uh, ticks on this, on this side, but now these two sides are equal. And this one's orthogonal to the directrix, which means this is another point on the parabola. And now I will truly take my time to draw the parabola in. One other thing that you'll recall that we'll have to justify a little bit more cleanly than we did in the past is that this orthogonal bisector is actually tangential to the parabola. That's very special. Yeah, parabolas are rough. I think I do okay with circles, but parabolas are rough. Okay, so here is an interesting point to observe. First, we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to make a very careful observation here and then move on in step two to the actual proof. So here's the chord that we'll be concerned with. And I'll just do it as faintly as I can. Here's the area that we want to evaluate. And what we're going to do is compare the shaded area with the area of this triangle, which was also your problem on the homework. This triangle that consists of the chord and the two tangents. So maybe okay, they can be a little green. And we will prove that the shaded area is two-thirds of the area of the triangle. And that would constitute success in squaring the parabola. Okay, let's see what we can find. First, direct your attention to the triangle that consists of the directrix and, the t and these lines. What do they call them? They're the lines that were used in the construction of the two points on the parabola, okay? And notice that this point is actually the center of the circumscribed circle. The circle is not so important to us. What's important to us is that this point is equidistant from all three vertices of this triangle by an argument that we've already used for this specific problem. Being the orthogonal bisector of this side, every point on this line is equidistant from these two vertices. And so this point is also, because it's on that line. And every point on this line, the orthogonal bisector, which is the tangent to the parabola, are equidistant from these two vertices. And so is this point, because it's on that line, but that point is on both lines. So it's equidistant from all three uh, vertices. So that's observation number one. About it. So what we're going to draw now is a vertical line through this point. This vertical line is parallel, and by vertical, of course, I mean orthogonal to the directrix. Well, it's parallel to these two segments. And because this point is equidistant from these two vertices, this vertical line, it basically creates three parallel lines 
that are equidistant from each other. Does that make sense? And what does that mean? It means that where it intersects the chord that we're interested in, and where it intersects the directrix, right? It cuts this segment exactly in half, and it cuts the chord exactly in half. So we'll mark that, and that's the main takeaway that we need. Okay, but this one I'll use the ticks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, what we just discovered, and that's the fact we'll use in step two, is that when you draw the two tangents at the points where the chord ends, where it meets, where the two points intersect at the vertex of the triangle, by the way, it's called an Archimedes triangle for obvious reasons. If we draw a line that's perpendicular to the directrix, or you could say parallel to the axis of the parabola, then it cuts the chord exactly in half. Make sense? Okay. And the, another point that will become very important for us in just a moment is this one, which is where that line intersects the parabola. So that will be the point that we'll now use in step two and prove something very special about it. So now we have three points of interest on the parabola. The two original vertices that we chose and constructed, and this new one, which is, in a sense, in the director's sense, exactly halfway in between. And what we're going to do is draw a tangent to this, at this point. And what color are my tangents? Blue. So blue, good, blue, I'm holding blue. So there we go, I'm going to draw the tangent. I kind of know the property that I want it to have, so I will have it have that property, and there it is. And now, let me erase everything that we're not going to use in the second part. So, now we can continue with our argument, and I'll just remind you of the fact that we just derived. If we choose two points on the parabola, and draw two tangent lines at those points, and find the point where they intersect, and thereby form, oh, that's the focus, do I still need the focus? I don't need the focus anymore either. And thereby form an Archimedes triangle. If I take the third vertex of that triangle and draw a line, now that the directrix is gone, I would like to say that it's parallel to the axis of the parabola. It will divide the chord the very chord we started with, exactly in half. That's all we need right now. But notice that we're kind of looking at three Archimedes triangles right here, because this is another point on the parabola. So if I take these two points to be my vertices, then I have another Archimedes triangle. And it's right here, vertex, vertex, third point. That's another Archimedes triangle which in its own right has the same property that we just discovered. If, we, if I take this point right here and draw a line parallel to the axis, it will divide this chord in half. Okay? Yet it's getting a little busy, but you're still with me, right? Because it's just the same argument on half the scale, roughly. And the third one is right here. Here's the chord, two vertices, and here's the third one. And now observe this. I will now show you that this line, which is the tangent to this middle point that we constructed, actually divides the sides of the Archimedes triangle in half. So what I'm about to show you is that this equals this. And from that we'll conclude that this tangent is actually the mid-segment of our Archimedes triangle. And that will give us all of the proportions that we're looking for. What I'm going to do, now just focus on this triangle. And let's reuse the fact that we established in step one. And that is, if I were to draw the line parallel to the axis, it will cut this chord in half. Now I can use this because, right? And now look at this triangle. If it cuts this side in half, 
and it's parallel to the base because both lines are parallel to the axis, right? Well, then it's the mid-segment of this line, so it cuts this side in half. You guys are with me? You buy that? Yeah, that's just... And of course, the exact same thing happens on this side. So this third tangent that we constructed is exactly the mid-segment of uh, this triangle, which of course means that it also cuts this side in half. Now let's talk areas. We're pretty much done, right? So you see how everything, whichever way you look, is divided in half, is cut in half. Every, everything's cut in half. This is cut in half, this is cut in half, this is cut in half. You get a car and you get a car and this is cut in half. Everything's just cut in half. So if we compare, let's the, compare the area of this triangle uh, to the area of the Archimedes triangle. And it's half because it has the same base and clearly half the height. Even though this line is not the height because this angle is not 90 degrees, but that doesn't matter because when we have parallel lines, everything's cut in proportion. Remember that problem on the homework, that very basic fact that parallel lines cut everything in just the identical proportions. So the area of this triangle inside the parabola is half the area of the Archimedes triangle, exactly half the area. Okay, now let's compare that, and I, re I recognize that my drawing is is not quite accurate, to the area of this triangle. Do you see something that just gets cut off from the Archimedes triangle by the third tangent? This triangle in area is actually a quarter of the Archimedes triangle because it's half the base and half the height. So it's one quarter. So what we've observed is that the area of the triangle on the inside of the parabola is twice as large, even though it doesn't look like that in the drawing, because I didn't make this curved enough, but in any case, it's twice as large as the area on the outside of the parabola within the Archimedes triangle. That's all we need to show, because look, these two triangles cover most of what's inside the parabola, which is the area we were interested in, and outside the parabola. But just like with the circle and the square is inside, that was the observation that basically cracked this problem, but we knew that we had to say more. We, need, we, we knew that we had to say, well, there's also this square, and then once you do that, there's also the smaller square that becomes its own. So you've got to have to keep filling it in and say that we can do it to our heart's content until more and more and more and more is filled in, right? So now we could just focus on this Archimedes triangle, or this one, the other two Archimedes triangles that we formed, and realize that there will be a triangle inside and a triangle outside, and this one will also be twice as big as this one, and so on and so on and so forth. And so the area inside the parabola is twice as big as the area outside the parabola. Well, now it's a complete mess, but it's the final step. So it's two-thirds. If what's on the inside is twice as much as what's on the outside, then it's two-thirds. So the area of this, of this parabolic section is two-thirds the area of the triangle. And since we, can, we know how to square triangles, remember it took a couple steps, but we did it. It was very elegant. We have therefore squared the parabola. Kudos to Archimedes. Nothing here went beyond parallel lines and the midpoint segment theorem. And there we go. Just one of absolute gems and uh, just so inspirational and just allows us to learn so much just in terms of flair. You know, what you want to learn from these guys, what you want to imitate with these guys is flair. Or is the modern word for it riz? Yeah, you want 
I think flair is still the right word. You want to imitate this kind of fearlessness, flair, and just tackling on difficult problems and just insisting on staying beautiful, right? It just has to stay elegant. Once you lose elegance, you lose interest. And we only do math because it's fun, I think, as far as I'm concerned. That's why I do math. Uh, I don't do it for the money, God knows. Uh, <laughs> I don't do it for the glory. I don't do it because it has applications. I find applications to be very important, but I do applications because they're fun, right? Because we also want to be engineers and we want to build things and we want to solve problems. So I care about applications. I'm just talking about emotionally, you know? Like, I think that's important because applications are fun. So when somebody asks me, oh, you're working on this problem, what are the applications? I actually get irritated by that question a little bit because I'm not doing it because I'm pursuing God's coattails. I think that's a, a load of crap. I'm not doing it because it's uh, elev an elevated activity. I don't do it for any of those reasons. I just do it because it's fun, right? So, uh, and that I think is the most, re the most important reason for keeping things elegant. Because if, you, if something becomes inelegant, then you just stop doing it. That's why you fail. You fail not because the problem becomes intractable, but because it uh, stops being fun. Can you guys relate to that a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so now talking about keeping things elegant, let's do this the way a calculus student would do this 2,300 years later.